good morning all today we are going to uh, see about the what are supply engineering concepts so basically the five most essential elements for the existence of human lives are air water food heat and light of which next to air so water is the most important requirement for the human life to exist man uses water not only for the drinking and culinary purposes but also for bathing washing laundering heating and some various other purposes so it is evident that every activity of man involves some uses of water so first we would like to see about what is a need for a protected water supply in public water supply system so it is necessary the water which is supplied to the public should be free from the impurities that is either suspended or dissolved form and microorganisms and any other contamination that causes a serious harm to the public so what we have to do we have to plan and build such a water supply scheme which would provide potable water free from any kind of the contamination so it is the main objectives of any water supply system so let us look about the main objectives of a public water supply system so the three main objectives of a water supply system are to supply safe water to the consumers the first and foremost one is to supply safe water that is one which is unpolluted free from any diseases unpolluted and any toxic substances as well as excessive amount of the minerals the organic matter that may impair the quality of water so that it would be safe and wholesome if it is not harmful when consumed so for this in order to ensure the water which is supplied is safe and wholesome the standards of quality for drinking water has been established so we can know there are various standards ia standards who standards so a lot of other in different countries so they have their own standards so these are mainly established to bring the safe water to the consumers the second one is to supply the water in adequate quantity so it would be necessary to select a source of water which would ensure the quantity of water as required by the consumers so this can be done by the population forecasting methods and the liter per capita per day lpcd that can be calculated for the population so generally what we will do is so we will project the population so for 30 40 years from now from the last census data so your water quality scheme should be adopted to satisfy the population for the future generation and that can be calculated by the 
let a per capita pending so third objective is to make the water available within the easy reach to the consumers so it would be necessary to provide a well laid out system of distribution laid out distribution with adequate capacity so that the system could be fully relied upon to meet the requirements of consumers at all hours of the day so in planning a water supply scheme so the following points has to be considered the following seven points has to be considered so the first one is the source of water the quality of the water the population then the rate of consumption the topography of the area financial aspects and the trends to the future developments so if you look at the source of water uh, most we should look upon the perennial source in the vicinity of the town sometimes the source of the water may not be available near the vicinity in that case the water may have to be procured from the far off places the source of water should therefore be selected keeping in the view the quality the quantity and the cost involved the second one is the quality of the water so we have to provide a good quality water to the consumers so if you there are two different sources the surface sources and the surface ground water so the ground water will be more or less in the good condition or the pure form of water so whereas the surface water will not be as pure as the ground water so the surface water has to be collected from the source then we have to go for the treatment and finally it should be distributed to the consumers in their required quality and also in the required quantity so third one is the population so the population can be forecasted from the available census data so will be forecast from the census data so various units of the scheme should be so designed that the scheme is able to cater the needs of the future population okay so then the rate of consumption so the demand of the water would depend on the various uses such as the domestic so the domestic uses commercial so the industrial and for the public uses so the rate of consumption per capita per day should be decided carefully considering all these uses so this rate when multiplied by the population so we'll give the quantity of the water required for the water supply scheme so at this point we have to look carefully so then the topography of the area the topographical map to be served by the water supply scheme should be prepared so this map will be useful in the location of the various units of the scheme so and help in the formulation of the most economical scheme so topography of the map is very much necessary so then the financial aspects so this involves the consideration of the total funds available 
for the water supply scheme so any water supply scheme should be planned that it is as economical as possible and the entire scheme is adjusted within the available funds so if we exceed the the funds available then that will be again collected from the present population so we should not affect the present population by exceeding the funds available for any water supply scheme so trends of the future development so it should be properly predicted and properly adjusted by planning the water supply scheme some of the possible future development it may be in the form of the new industries so any institutions like college or schools etc and the public recreation places so all these aspects should be considered in the future development So it is the components of any public water supply system. So what will be the components? There will be seven components mainly. The first one is the source of water supply. So again, the source of water supply will be the surface and the subsurface sources. So like the rivers, surface sources will be the rivers, lakes, ponds, and the surface subsurface will be the springs wells like that then the intake for collecting the water from where the water is collected for the water supply scheme whether it is in the vicinity or from the far off places then the water treatment plants so it includes the different processes from the collecting the spring sedimentation, filtration, so finally disinfection, so any water has to be disinfected before it is supplied to the consumer, consumers, so either it is a surface water or surface water, the treatment methods will be followed and finally it will be disinfected and supplied to the consumers. If it is a surf surface water, it will be disinfected and we can directly supply if the quality of the water is as required. So the service reservoirs, there will be different service reservoirs at different places. So from treatment plants, it will be to the service reservoir and from there, it will be distributed to the consumers. So for this control walls, so there will be a lot of walls in the pipeline systems. So in the pipeline systems, there will be a lot of walls in the main line and the branch service line. So distribution systems, how it is distributed, what is the, in which scheme it is distributed. So it will be main line and it will be distributed like this to be, or it is a gray will be distributed like this so what kind of distribution system that it will be followed so in addition to that there will be a lot of hydrants so we may see a lot of hydrants like fire hydrants for fire fighting and for the flushing the streets may see in a lot of the streets there will be pipes to flush out the streets so the public water supply scheme should take all into this account and a proper a supply scheme has to be designed for the present as well as the future generation so it's a flow diagram of the water supply scheme so sources first we have identified the sources uh, so surface or the subsurface sources so the surface sources will be the major contribution so 
for any water supply scheme. So this can also be taken into account, but it contributes very much less to any water supply scheme. So then from intake it goes to the treatment plants. So in the treatment plants various units have been adopted uh, like sedimentation, coagulation, filtration, disinfection or other treatment methods. So then it goes to the service reservoir here. Finally it is distributed to the public. Okay. So these are the components of any public water supply system. So that's all for now. And you can comment in the comment section. Uh, the PDF file of this document has been given in the description box. So you can just download it and make use of it. Thank you.